हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज शी बजॉय वेलकम टू माय चैनल जायन शकाइना ऑफिशियल जायन मींस गॉड्स डवेलिंग प्लेस एंड शकाइना इज गॉड्स ग्लोरी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट गॉड्स पर्पस एंड नॉट इन टर्म्स ऑफ लाइक इन टर्म नॉट जस्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ आस और द अर्थ और द हेवन और or the wildlife or the aquatic life and all that not just in in those terms but in the in the terms of uh, his glory too so uh, if we see psalm 50 um actually i will be reading the entire psalm from 1 to 23 so um you know we're going to like discover god's purpose and the title of my message is god's purpose the mighty one god the lord speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets so what do we see here we see that god the lord he speaks and he summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets like he just summons it like you know what what is summon mean first of all it means that when you summon a person they have to be in front of you and then when you ask that person to leave that means it's a command they have to leave so god is actually uh, uh, speaking to the earth and uh, from the rising of the sun like from where it has you know the sun has risen to where it's going to set he's speaking there and he's asking he's summoning the earth he's summoning the um he summons the uh, earth to je- for the earth to rise of the sun to where it sets from zion perfect to beauty god shines forth our god comes and will not be silent a fire devours before him and around him a tempest rages see from zion perfect in beauty god shines forth what is zion zion actually it's a hill uh, it's a mountain on uh, um in the in jerusalem actually but sometimes zion is also referred to the entire jerusalem i mean the entire israel also and zion is a, has a very significant uh Uh, meaning and as a very significant symbolic and it's very symbolic too in nature zion is uh, as i said you know zion is god's dwelling place and zion in jeru is is in in it's a mountain in jerusalem and for some time actually when till david captured uh, israel and and uh, till he you know uh, 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 inhabited israel uh, jerusalem it was called zion even now it is called zion but he also gave another name to that place called the city of david so the entire place is zion and also <clears throat> zion means also the stronghold it, it's also the it's also a fortress that means what is a fortress fortress is uh, something that you um go in hiding like when uh and when enemies come to siege you know you go in hiding into that fortress when the enemies are trying to attack you go into that fortress so zion is called the fortress so why because it is on it's on a mountain it's a mountain it's a highest peak where it is beauty it says the sam the sam is says that from zion perfect to beauty god shines forth why because it it is the highest peak uh in jerusalem where god's light shines on it and where you know and everything and anything can be seen from that mountain and it's very beautiful uh, hill place also uh zion is also as i said you know i named my channel zion shekina it was very very supernatural i didn't even know about this name before and also i named my house zion shekina before i named the my channel i named my house zion 
வச்சுருக்கா ஏன்னா பிகாஸ் காட் ஹேஸ் அ வெரி பிக் பர்பஸ் அண்ட் வென் ஐ லுக் இன் டு யூனோ காட் ஜஸ்ட் கேவ் மீ ஒன் தட் நேம் ஒன் டே ஆஸ் ஐ வாஸ் ப்ரேயிங் பிகாஸ் ஐ மீன் நாட் ப்ரேயிங் டு ஹாவ் இன்டென்ஷனலி நாட் ப்ரேயிங் டு ஹாவ் அ ஹவுஸ் நேம் ஆர் சம்திங் லைக் தேட் பிகாஸ் வென் பீப்புள் டெடிகேட் தே வாண்ட் டு ஹேவ் அன் ஹவுஸ் நேம் பட் இட் வாஸ் ஜஸ்ட் லைக் இன் இன் த பேக் ஆஃப் மை மைண்ட் டு லைக் கிவ் அ நேம் டு த ஹவுஸ் பட் ஐ வாஸ் நாட் லைக் சோ பர்டிகுலர் அபவுட் தேட் பட் லேட்ரு ஆன் ஆஸ் ஐ வாஸ் ப்ரேயிங் காட் ஜஸ்ட் ப்ளேஸ் திஸ் name zion shekina which means zion means you know god's dwelling place and it is in isaiah 8:18 and psalm 74:2 where it says that mount zion is a place where yahweh the god of israel dwells mount zion is the place where yahweh the god of israel dwells so and uh, and and uh, of course god is king right once again. also uh, mount zion um you know it's it's very significant because um we see mount zion actually being actually the, on the mount moria when i think it said like god when the temple of david was built it was called as mount zion and that is in the city of david so it plays a very, uh, zion plays a very significant role in the bible especially with god and i'm you know uh, and it's important that we talk about mount zion or zion because that is where lot of like significant things uh, are going to happen and have happened and because it also holds the past and the present and also the future Well, yeah as it's described in the in the bible and uh, and also um uh, i'm reading it here that uh it is very significant because david himself uh in fact because of his lineage was prophesied that he would come from the, that the lord would come from uh, king david uh, line right king david sub line so that actually also was prophesied on mount zion it says and god's throne will be established on mount zion because mount moriah is a place is a is a place where god actually um Mount Zion uh, sorry Mount Moriah is also very significant because and it is called Mount Zion and it's very significant because it it is believed and it is said that uh, um, Abraham went up on that mountain to uh, Uh, to w- went up on that mountain to call uh, uh, to sacrifice Isaac <coughs> so mount moria it's also believed that mount moria which is mount zion is it's believed that jesus uh, was uh, you know crucified it's the same ancient mountain that was where jesus was also crucified on that mountain and the other significant thing is that uh, the temple was built on mount moria which is mount zion you know later on as we see so it has a very significant uh, uh symbolism uh to to this name uh to mount zion um and and it says in verse 3 uh, so yeah it says in verse 4 he summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people gather gather to me this consecrate gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice and the heaven and the heavens proclaim his righteousness for he is a god of justice so god's purpose on mount zion which is god's dwelling place is that <clears throat> not only has he made this mount zion beauty perfect in beauty why because light shines forth from that and it is the highest mountain on jerusalem and also lot of significant things have happened like jesus um praying on that mountain 
and jesus uh, <clears throat> was believed to be crucified and abraham uh, sacrificed and and, and also uh, <clears throat> jesus when he comes back you know he will dwell on that he and uh, sorry the solomon's temple you know david wanted to build the temple and solomon built it so solomon's temple was built on mount zion so that's why god says it's a place of dwelling for him and <clears throat> and gather to me so and also uh, verse 4 it says that mount zion is also a place of it's a it's a covenant made between god and his people for sacrifice and for his justice to be revealed <coughs> because the heavens proclaim his righteousness for he is a god of justice verse 6 says that and 7 listen my people and i will speak i will testify against you israel i am i am god your god i bring no charges against you concerning your sacrifices or sa- concerning your burnt sacrifices which are ever before me i have no need of a bull from your stall or or of goats from your pens for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle of a thou- and a cattle on a thousand hills i know every bird in the mountain and the insects in the fields are mine how beautiful so god's purpose here god is letting us know that that you know all sacrifices may be in vain because when they are not god god when they are not give uh, uh, sacrifice to god on with with the clean heart with the pure heart you know he's saying he doesn't even like require those things why because he requires a clean heart he requires a heart which is acceptable to god he requires god requires a heart that 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 man should be that god should be pleased about when something is given see suppose even in a in a situations also when someone gives us grudgingly when someone gives us something like in a mean way and you know, we don't like to accept it it's the same thing with god more so why because he is god why why is he saying that he is saying that he doesn't require all these sacrifices only because he says that all the bulls or all the animals of the earth are his and also the cattle on a thousand hills is his and also he knows every bird in the mountain and the insects he knows every bird he says you know every bird by name every bird he knows i mean there are so many thousands and thousands of species of birds different kinds in each in each um, family or tribe of a bird or a clan of a bird um whatever you call it you know i'm not a bird fan but i love birds um each they they're, they're different they they're very different right according to their uh, species according to their color according to their um uh, uh, uh size according to you know their their habitats according to their habits they they are very different and there are thousands of them there are thousands of them so um thousands of species and and thousands like lakhs of them which are so different from each other so you see i know every bird in the mountains and the insects in the fields are mine how many insects i mean they might be like million insects and they're saying that they're all mine and i know the birds who are like that who have who are like in lakhs i know them personally is what god is saying so he's saying in 12 if he was hungry you know he would tell the whole I, i would read i'll read this if i were hungry i would not tell you for the world is mine and all that is in it how beautiful right so the world is his again god is talking about his purpose in the world which means why did he create the world he created the world for his glory and second is like everyone who in, inhabits the world like you know the earth like the people like animals like cattle like um um birds like aquatic life terrestrial life uh, people all that we- come after god's purpose the main reason for god to create this purpose is for his glory so that in his glory all these things will be seen and they will glorify god they will only have one accord one praise to praise and that is giving glory to god why because he created them and he placed them actually he gave them home right he gave animals their home on the earth he gave aquatic life 
made seas and gave them their home there he gave birds their home he gave uh, human beings their home on the earth so what should all these people all these things should do living things should do they should only have one purpose and that purpose is to be a purpose in god's purpose it per, be a, a, a beacon in god's purpose that means be one hand in glove with god's purpose and what is god's purpose that is to bring glory to his name that we need to bring glory to his name and is already glorified so that is what is talking about and and if we see verse uh, 14 sacrifice thanks offerings to god fulfill your vows to the most high and call on me in the day of trouble i will deliver you and you will honor me so he is saying that when you do your sacrifices and all that at one point he said you know i really don't care about that why because he is talking about people who give with the uh, who are very vehement about their giving who are very cunning in their giving who are very like uh, not right in their giving you know they have something in their head but god is saying you know all that i don't require but he is talking to another group of people where he is saying that bring your thank offerings why thank offering because <clears throat> when do you say uh, uh, thank you when the work is done right so he, he is saying whatever you have bring those thank offerings which means that whatever tr- your troubles are they are vanished whatever your things are you are delivered whatever your things that we face in life you know we have so many enemies and so many people who are doing so many bad things behind our back gossiping lying and uh, say wrong things about us or even and doing murder orders and all that for uh, many things you know for properties for um, j- getting their hands on for just um for steal and stealing and all those things i mean all the wicked things of what satan has done when these people do he is talking to another group and saying that bring your thank offerings which means the work is already done it's a done deal in my court it's a done deal before my throne that when you bring these thank offerings it means that and wow to the most high god he is saying that and you put your vows before the most high god he said that and when we call on the name of the lord he said he will deliver us in the day of trouble so that is very very important verse 16 it says but to the wicked person god says what right have you to recite my laws or take or take my covenant on your lips you hate my instruction and cast my words behind you when you see a thief you join with him you throw in your lot with adulterers you use your mouth for evil and harness tongue to deceit you sit and testify against your brother and slander your own mother's son so see to the wicked again god has so many things to say then from verse uh, 7 where did it go from verse 16 he has so many so many things to say to the wicked and and if we read from verse 16 he's saying you have no right god is talking to the wicked saying that you have no right no right to recite my laws he's saying because why because he is a holy god he wants people to be perfect at least even though they're not holy perfect in a sense like not showing off or not doing for the sake of doing but perfect in heart you know perfect in the right way to come before god and say lord this is what i want to do and this is what i'm going to do so that kind of perfection he needs so god is saying that if uh, that you have no right to recite my laws that means even to study the word they have no right at all and why because they hate instruction instruction is from god right every instruction that the bible talks about is from god so these wicked people they don't like that they don't like god telling them do not murder do not slander do not commit adultery do not steal do not do uh, do not tell lies because it's an abomination unto god do not gossip all those things they do not like so god is saying that they hate instruction and they cast my words behind you and why because what do they think these wicked people they don't they don't uh, 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 think that god is good i mean they don't they don't value to god's word so they cast his words behind them and they're saying and in the bible here is saying 18 verse when you see a thief you join with him how um, treacherous is and it's very true because see when our enemies might be enemies to others right but when they want to hurt us what what will they do 
they go and become friends of our enemies that means so this enemy and that enemy becomes a friend against you so that they come can come together and cause you harm so god is saying when you see a thief you you join with him you throw in your lot with the adulterers now that again we know adulterers means someone who has has a lustful spirit who has lusted with men not in marriage they have made them their husbands they have made them their boyfriends they have made them everything like they have made them uh the uh i mean they commit you know uh, sexual sins with them when they no they have no right to do that because they're not in covenant of the marriage there so you use your mouth for evil and harness your tongue to deceit see again lying gossiping and all that god is saying because you do these things and you sit and testify against your brother see and then they talk bad about their own family they tell lot of wrong things lot of lies lot of gossip about their own family i have experienced this this and i'm i'm going to and i'm going to say that you know god is my vindicator we have to leave these people to his in his hands why because you can change them you can go and try to rectify them because this spirit of lies this spirit of abomination this spirit of go- i mean gossip that is in them is from satan so they ha- they gain some power when they talk when they gossip about you when they gossip when they tell lies about you and when that happens sometimes you know the truth really doesn't prevail there because the people who have heard it they'll think how because these people are very versed very well versed in telling lies and gossips and all that about you but when you try to go and tell the truth they sometimes it doesn't work there at all why because they have the spirit of satan so when they have the spirit of satan the only one thing that you know i have realized and i'm telling you that you need to realize is just you know how do you pick vegetables from the garden you know or from anything you just have to pick them put it in put them in god's hands and say lord i'm giving them over to you do what you have to do with them because i'm not able to uh deal with them i don't know how to correct them i don't know how to stop them from lying about me or gossiping about me and all that so you deal with when god when we put that thing in his hands because god himself is talking about the wicked right these are the wicked people's characteristics so he's saying when you do all this what is god going to do he's talking about that in 22 consider this you who forgot god or i will tear you to pieces with no one to rescue see what is can we do that to those wicked people we can we won't be able to why because they have this satanic power they they work under those things they work in that satan's power but when god intervenes when we give those people into his hands what is god saying that he's going to tear them to pieces with no one to rescue their money their uh, relatives their friends their partners in crime no one no one will be able to rescue such people because what god is going to do no one can even put a a, a breath a, a, a nail into that and uh distort his plan they, they, no no one will be able to do that so that is what god is talking about and those and also he's saying those who sacrifice thank offerings honor me and to the blameless i will show my salvation so when you know we have been blamed for wrong things or gossips or any wrong things and all that don't worry what is god saying he's going to give us salvation and what is salvation here mean it's not just get uh, salvation means that it's not just getting into heaven but also salvation means god's glory will be revealed through us to make every wrong right to make every um a curse into a blessing that these people have to put or to make every every person understand the truth from the the wrongs from the uh, the truth from the uh, wrong from the lies so all this god is going to do from his holy place and what is his holy place that is called zion and that's why you know i i was reading it and i was wanting to put some title on it like a message title and i didn't know what it is and suddenly god spoke to me and see it's god's purpose how beautiful it is because he has put everything in psalm 50 he talked about his glory he talked about the animals he talked about sacrifices he talked about the good people he talked about the wicked people and also and also he talked about 
he talked about his dwelling place that that was in the past that is in the pre present now and also what uh, that is going to be mount zion in the future that will be his dwelling place it has always been his dwelling place and it will always be his his dwelling place and when i named this you know about a couple of years ago in 2017 when i named my house zion shekina zion again is god's glory and shekina is god's uh, sorry zion is god the uh, god's dwelling place and shekina is god's glory when i named it i i, I didn't go, uh, go into this kind of depth like i didn't understand so much but when i read this psalm 50 it really like opened my eyes and you know i'm feeling very special about this place why because this is god's house really and one more one more testimony that i want to share with you and it's like like no boasting at all but it's it's a, a, a testimony that i i i feel like telling because uh, you know god is really in this house because a lot of people who have stepped into this house they said they have seen you know people that you won't even imagine would tell you such things i mean they're just very nominal in their faith and some of them have you know read the bible maybe about 10 chapters in their entire life or some of them have like read or, and some have read entirely and some are like deeply immersed you know so all categories of people uh, who have come into this house you know my house um they saw Jesus here they saw cross here they saw angels here they saw uh, the glory of god here and when they you know um, i have heard it like many times from many years at least from i think 2000 um 2000 yeah for almost like you know 6 7 years i have been hearing this and and i, I used to take like you know i mean though we name though like i named it zion shekina you know god's dwelling place and glory of god and all that and when i told my mom she was very happy and all that but though i named this this uh, thing really didn't come so much alive or so uh, uh, like uh, vivid you know to me but when people started speaking about you know seeing jesus in this house seeing the glory of god in this house seeing uh, angels in this house seeing the cross in this house you know really uh, moved me to yeah, you know greater uh, assurance that god, this is truly god's dwelling place this is the house of god and this is his house you know per se because this is a uh, completely you know he gave that name for a meaning he gave this name to be put on this house for a purpose and um, and th this house is dedicated when my mom bought this land and she built it she said dedicated to the glory of god on the cornerstone she has written this and it was on march 24th which is a birthday in 1995 so uh you know it, it so everything is just coming in alignment about this you know house and god's glory and god's dwelling place and all that here so uh it just moved me and recently uh we celebrated easter easter is is when one of my uh um non christian friends they ask me what exactly is easter we know that he god is risen we know that jesus you know came alive and all that but what exactly is easter i mean what what is the significance of that and i said uh, and she said you have to tell me in just one word and i said victory so easter is nothing but it's the the celebration you know celebration of victory celebration of um, god's love you know for us and and that is victory so i told her that and so it was uh, so you know when um so this is what you know and and recently yeah i just slipped my out of my mind but recently um on easter i've invited few friends uh from church and uh you know i ordered lunch and then so we had very good time of having a good time of uh, fellowship here 
and um, and uh, and one of them said you know we just came into our ho- your house and and it felt so peaceful i mean when we go into some other places and all that sometimes we feel a little different and something is wrong or something is not nice but when we came into your house it felt so peaceful one person said that even before prayer another person you know so when we gathered i told them that we all like need to you know just spend some time i mean we all came back from church uh, and it was already late you know they were hungry we were hungry everybody everyone was hungry but i still wanted prayer here you know uh, wanting to uh, again feel blessed and, and wanting to celebrate the birth, uh, sorry the risen savior in this home you know and when we did that they saw, they also saw that one or two people saw angels here one or two people saw literally a cross a very big cross so that has moved uh, uh, me to you know think about this in a house in a very different dimension and i know for sure what his purpose is so that's why also this psalm 50 i have named it as god's purpose because he, because he is talking from a point of from the point of mount zion you know and from the place of mount zion where it is his dwelling place so thank you all so much for listening may the lord bless this word thank you